Have you got a tube amp and did people tell you that you're too damn loud? Even when you're like at home and you're using a smaller tube amp like this Sir Ombre here, turn it up past two or three and they get loud. <laughs> So what is the power station technically? Well, I think of it as a load and reamp device, a reactive load and reamp, as opposed to an attenuator. Although it is basically an attenuator, but the way that I think of attenuators as they relate traditionally to guitar amplifiers and speaker cabinets, an attenuator is a box that you would put between the the speaker output of the amplifier and the cabinet, or maybe the internal speaker in the case of a combo, and that uh, attenuator would serve to sort of suck juice off the amplifier and then still pass some signal through to the speaker, but at a reduced level, so you could turn down the amplifier essentially. So what's different with the design of the PS100? Well, it's got a load box built in that basically is designed to bring the amplifier all the way down to line level. It's a reactive load box, so it reacts like the amp is still plugged into a guitar cabinet. Your tone and your feel stay the same. And it's totally safe for the amplifier and all that. And then the reamp portion is a built-in 100 watt tube amplifier, real clean linear tube amp, that's meant to bring the signal back up to whatever level that you want. Now I've tried just about every attenuator on the market as well as some load reamp designs like this one. And with most passive attenuators that I've tried, there's a few good ones out there. I got one back here actually, this one's not made anymore. It works quite well as like a passive traditional attenuator, but like I say, you can't get them anymore and they were really quite expensive when they were out. And for the most part, I always find using those types of boxes that there's always just something lacking. And usually the more attenuation that you go for with those traditional types of attenuators, the more tone you lose. With the load reamp design that the Fryat PS100 uses, I don't find anything lacking. I mean, the tone is so close when it's reamped back through the speaker that it's almost exactly the same. And if there is a difference, it's like negligible and almost like who cares. So I aim to demonstrate that in this video so that you can hear what I'm talking about. Something that you can't get out of the video is the feel, but I'm here to tell you that the feel is the same. When you're plugged into the thing, it feels like you're still connected to the cabinet and it sounds like you're still connected to the cabinet directly. So I've come to the conclusion after a lot of years of trying these kinds of things that there's just something about the load reamp uh, and specifically yeah, with the power station that just works really, really well for bringing down the level of a loud guitar amp. Okay, now the PS100 you can also just use as a load box and take a line out of it and go like right into a recording interface, say if you want to track uh, direct guitar sounds and then maybe add some speaker simulation either via an analog speaker simulator or maybe impulse responses in the computer. So you can do that with this box as well. Generally speaking, I just use it around here as an attenuation device to bring down the level going to my speaker cabinet that's mic'd out in the other room. I've got a nice old Marshall cabinet out there with vintage old uh, black back speakers from the 70s and it's a kind of a low power cabinet. It's a 100 watt cabinet with 425 watt uh, celestians in it and sometimes I'm pummeling that thing with like 100 watt amps that are dimed and putting out it well in excess of 100 watts so I've always got it in line I'm always using it to bring the volume down just so that I'm I'm not like brutalizing that cabinet but also just because there's other people in the building here and I find I just don't need to play that loud um, honestly with this device I can get the awesome cranked amp tone and just bring the level down to a reasonable volume and still get the same result as if I had the amp cranked it super loud through the cab. Now, obviously for folks at home, um, this is huge. Or if you're playing gigs and you get yelled at because you got your 50 or 100 watt old Marshall Plexi cranked up or whatever, uh, this is huge. So tons of applications for this thing, obviously. People playing at home, people playing in any kind of situation where you just want the great tone of a cranked up tube amp, but you want to bring down the volume. One more really cool use for it, if you've got a five watt amp and you wish you could gig it because it sounds really cool and feels good under the fingers, but it's not nearly loud enough, this thing will let you bring your five watt amp up to any level, up to 100 watts. So all of a sudden this makes your tweed champ giggable. 
It's also two channels and it's also got an effect loop uh, built in. So more on that because that stuff's really cool. More on that in a little bit. Real quick, all the controls here, you get your power switch over here as well as a switch to bypass or put the unit into operation. Over here, you've got three-way switches here that let you fine tune the load. So if these are all the way down, you've essentially got a flat resistive load, just like a load resistor. Turn these into the middle position. This is uh, the warm position here and the bright position here. Now you've got a reactive load and this is terrific for plugging into speaker cabinets and getting the same sound, essentially. This is as if you're plugged directly into the cabinet with your amplifier. Um, put these switches all the way up, you get a more aggressive uh, reactive impedance curve, and this can work great uh, for running uh, direct or using impulse responses for speaker simulation. I usually find if I'm reamping through a cabinet that the middle position sounds just perfect and just like I'm still plugged directly into the cab. As far as other controls here, you get two sets of controls for each channel. You can essentially preset two different volume levels in this and then you can flip between the two channels right here with the select switch. Uh, you can also foot switch this more on that in a bit here. That's what I use this for. Uh, you get a volume control for each channel, a presence, and a depth for fine-tuning uh, the super high frequencies and the, and the subby frequencies of each channel. I'm not going to show you the back, but on the back you've got all your inputs and outputs as well as 4, 8, and 16 ohm selection uh, for both the input and the output. So you can hook a 4 ohm amplifier up to this and then go out into a 16 ohm cabinet with no problems or 8 ohm into 16, or 16 ohm into a 4 ohm cabinet, whatever you want, you're basically covered on the back as far as the impedance selection for both the input and the output going out to your speaker cabinet. So when I use the power station here in my studio, which is pretty much every day, generally speaking, what I'll do is set the voicing switches to the middle positions. That sounds the most to me, like when I'm plugged into a cabinet and reamping with it, sounds the most natural and the most like it's not in line at all. If you want to get a little bit more thump or a little bit more high end, you can switch the switches all the way to the up position. But yeah, I'm gonna show you how I use it, generally speaking. And what I've done is I've actually set the volume for about unity gain. So in other words, when I switch the power station in line, you're hearing the reamp signal, but at the same volume as when it's bypassed. So that's about as transparent of an attenuation device as I've ever heard. Um, I just don't think there's barely any difference in between the sound. Um, and this is the first time I've actually used it with the ombre. So just to be clear, what you're hearing is in bypass, this thing's completely out of line. When I hit operate, this is completely loading the amp down to line level. And then the internal 100 watt power amp is reamping back up to unity gain when the volume is around halfway. It's generally around unity gain. Um, and then at that point, that's the most, you know, telling to sort of a difficult acid test because if you can get it to sound the same at unity gain, then you can just bring this down at whatever level that you want. So more on that in a little bit. We'll do a test through my JMP50. If you want a little more top end or a little more thump, you can always just play with the, uh, the presence and the depth controls. Let me just record a little bit here and let's try that. Okay, let's talk about a couple of things that really differentiate this version of the power station and make it even cooler than the first version. Okay, the number one thing is it's got two full channels in it, uh, and that allows you to preset two different volume levels that you can switch between. So you can have a rhythm volume and a solo volume that jumps up in level. This is really great uh, if you've got a vintage tube amp, something like an old Marshall or something, and it's like, yeah, it sounds great, but I'd love to be able to get a, a bump up from my solo volume. 
So the PS100 will work with a bunch of different foot switches. I'm using this Boss FS7 because it's a dual foot switch and it works really well and it's super compact. The A switch switches on and off the effect loop and the B switch changes channels. <laughs> Well, there you go, two foot switchable channels. And you can set different volume levels as well as the presence and depth levels for each channel. So that's really nice. Uh, one of the other great things about it is that it's got an effects loop built in that you can foot switch. So if you've got like, like I said, like an old Marshall or something you've never been able to run a long clean delays with or something like that for your lead sound, they got you covered. <laughs> So this is huge. I mean, no matter what kind of amp you've got, an AC30 or, uh, you know, old Marshall or something like that, or a modern amp, it's always great to have an effects loop so that you can add some post effects. I mean, it'd be great with reverb as well. Anything that's good in the post path and you haven't been able to do because your old amp doesn't have an effects loop, this is a no brainer. Speaking of AC30, I've got a uh, King Royale here, which is basically an AC30 circuit. I'm gonna uh, play a little bit for you through the top boost channel and I'll add some of the effects in using the effects uh, loop in the power station and you can hear how much that'll add. I'll use an analog style delay, I think. Um, the, the top hat has an effect loop in it, but I find I don't really like running effects in the loop of the top hat. The amp relies on power amp distortion and drive. The folks that like AC30s and AC15s know this. And so the level of the delay, even though there's a loop in there, can really jump up and down uh, with small volume changes on the amp. So I much prefer using it in the loop of the power station. And then I can add a little more or less grind via the volume control in the amp without affecting my delay level. So let's check out what a little echo sound like uh, coming post the top hat amp running into the power station. So I think I've already shown you that at unity gain, or in other words, when I've got the uh, the power station at the exact same volume when it's in line in the signal as when the amp is just running right into the cabinet directly, at unity gain with it in line, it's pretty close to an identical sound. I mean, it's splitting hairs if there's any differences. It's a very, very transparent unit, uh, which is the whole point of the thing. But I bet you guys want to hear anyway some like volume reduced clips. So I'm going to play some Zeppelin and I'll play it into my TC Ditto looper so that it'll be the exact same part looping. And what I'll do is I'll bypass the unit and you'll hear that. Then I'll put it in line at unity gain. You'll hear that. And then let's do like two different volume reduced clips, like a half volume and then a bedroom volume. And then what I'll do is I'll uh, play those back. But then after that, I want to volume match those reduced clips. So I'll bring them up in the DAW so that they're the exact same level as the full volume clips. And you can see if you hear any differences. If there's any differences there, really it's kind of down to how hard we're driving the speaker cabinet and the uh, speaker and microphone interaction and things like that. But let's go through that exercise anyway. And then I also want to just show you uh, the effect of the voicing switches on the sound if, uh, if I've got those all the way down in the middle position or all the way up. Okay, so let's do that now. <laughs>
Thanks for watching my video on the PS100 uh, reactive load and reamp device, attenuation device. It's a really, really nice piece of gear that I've uh, been able to make great use of here in my studio. I mean, it's pretty much uh, something that I use every day around here. I feel like it's very, very transparent and allows me to get the tone of my amps at any volume, as well as being able to add some echo or reverb or anything I want in the loop. It's just coming in really handy around here. You can check it out further at the link down there in the video description below. And uh, hey, please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell beside the subscribe. You'll get an alert when I put out new videos. I'm Pete Thorne. Take care. Over and out.